Hello, I'm Kathy Hayes. I'm a member of the Adult Formation Task Force. I'm here to introduce our speaker today, Professor Claudia Stevens. She teaches costume design at the Meadows School of the Arts. She has worked not only at SMU, but internationally in many, many, many theaters. I've known Claudia since she arrived at SMU about 1997, and um, we were trying to convince President Turner to expand the daycare, being moms. Um, and later, just a few years ago, Claudia and I ran in into each other and I said, oh, Claudia, I would love to retire, but I'm looking for a new career. And let me tell you what she responded. She said, I am attending classes at Perkins because I'm called into ministry of some sort. Not sure if it is ordination, hospice work, or chaplaincy. I am still discerning the call. Yeah, it's my pleasure to introduce Professor Claudia Steve. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to be here to speak to your group. Um, uh, I feel quite honored. Um, uh, I would like to say I'm a cradle Episcopalian. I was raised in West Texas. If you want to know about that, you can listen to the podcast Boomtown, or you can read Friday Night Lights. That will give you an idea of my upbringing. But I chose to go into theater, and after graduating from the University of Texas, I went to Carnegie Mellon to study theater and costume design. And from there, I taught a few years, but then went to New York City. Um, after being in New York City for over 12 years, that was when I joined the SMU faculty and became a teacher, um, a teacher of costume design. And so came back to Texas. Uh, you can't take Texas out of Texas people. And so I came back. Uh, that's just a little bit about my kind of career path. Um, during all of that time, I think I probably had the normal, you might say, um, ins and out of, of a faith uh, practice. Certainly in my 20s, I was, like my own sons, not very faithful. Uh, but while I was in New York, I began to try to connect uh, with faith communities, but it was difficult because of my time in the theater. Um, so, you know, the rest of th that's, that's kind of where my journey began, trying to find my way back into a faith community while maintaining the particular career path that I had. You, you theater people work 24-7. <laughs> I think it would be hard to schedule out any sort of uh, time for spirituality. It was, it was very difficult, and I'll never forget working on a Broadway show one time, and suddenly we were told uh, that we would not be working Sunday mornings, and I was quite surprised because that was very, very unusual. We were always working on holidays, Christmas Day, Thanksgiving Day. Mm -hmm and certainly on Sundays. But one of the stars of the cast, uh, her name was Jody Benson. You know her now as the voice of The Little Mermaid, but this was a different show. And she, in her contract, said, I will not work on Sunday mornings. And as a result, the rest of us got the opportunity to have Sunday mornings off. And I think that was a glimmer of hope for me. That was like, oh, look, someone stepping into their authority and saying, this is how it is to work with me. And so that was a beginning of figuring out that, wait a minute, I could set my own boundaries and say, this is my faith practice and I'll see you this afternoon. That is so cool. So um, tell us a little bit about um, a favorite moment of your faith or another faith in, in your educational setting as opposed to the costume design? Well, um, about, well, it's really been five or seven years that I started considering going back to school and studying at Perkins, which is the School of Theology at SMU. Uh, but my family life did not permit that at the time. I had two teenage boys and I had a husband who then got very ill and subsequently died. And so that was not the time. But I finally had the opportunity after his death to sort of take a look and say, well, maybe I could apply to Perkins. So I did and was accepted. Uh, you asked me about one of my favorite moments. And when I started the first class and they prayed before class began, I thought, I think I'm home. I think I'm home. So that was a wonderful moment. But I had already spent 
uh, I don't know, 15 years in the academy before that moment. Right. So you are in lots and lots of venues besides the classroom. You're in theaters, uh, the green room or um, the costume design room. Um, where, how do you, does your spirituality play out in those different venues? You know, for me, um, one of my spiritual gifts is not evangelism. So I don't immediately go to that place. But where I do go when I, as I have grown in my faith and as I have grown in my walk with Jesus, I, where I go is understanding where other people are in their walk and trying to recognize and be kind and be vulnerable and to be open. So for example, a couple of years, well, really just last year, I was doing a show in North Carolina. My assistant and other people in the costume shop were just working furiously, essentially for the theater, but also for me to make my vision come true. And I said, I'll go get lunch. And it meant I had to drive back across town to pick up what they wanted. I was glad to do that because to me, being a servant in those opportunities to reach out to people and to give them a sense of, of uh, the grace that can be given them in these tense and difficult moments, that's how I try to live my faith in those moments. Um, or that's at least one example. Right. Um so that um, I have always found you to be a very spiritual person, even even before um, this faith journey. Um, what are some of the benefits that you think you and others have reaped from this development in your spirituality? Um, the process of the development of my spirituality and my understanding of faith, which so most recently includes the studies at Perkins, but before that included Bible studies at a ver variety of locations. And for me, beginning to speak aloud in those studies with other people became um, a turning point. And then taking those moments from the safe space of a Bible study, a church group, a place where you feel safe, and then taking those moments and figuring out how to introduce those into other moments, whether it's a classroom or a one-on-one -on -one advising with a student, or a simply letting someone take the parking place and you going to find a different parking place, those moments became my opportunity to witness to Jesus. and. Even if other people don't recognize them, that's not so important to me, but it's important for me to acknowledge that I'm doing what I can as a person. There have been many opportunities. I teach graduate students, and sometimes they arrive fully formed, and sometimes they don't. And our first um, step is often to refer them to the health center. But, you know, it's a very di difficult situation. And to sit down and have a conversation with them and to let them know, let's just walk over to the health center, they're going to help you. So I'm passing on to other people who have experience where that student can get help. But the foundation for that conversation was laid in the first day of class in which I tell them, hello, my name is Claudia Stevens. I'm a costume designer. I've designed over 175 productions. I've worked with Alan Alda, Bernadette Peters. I've worked with all these people. I know what I'm doing. I'm also a Christian, a mother, a wife, you know, a, a member of a community. So to me, introducing myself and including all of my life in as, as that's all of who I am, just opens the door a little bit for that student to come to me and say, I need help. They don't say I need Christian help. They say I need help. And that to me is, is, is how I bring my Christianity into the workplace. So as opposed to actually talking about your faith, uh, your interactions are mostly being a servant of the Lord. Yes, I, I would say that I, that is most often what I'm doing is I'm in service to the Lord. Um, 
It is not that I don't talk about my faith. I would say that in the last seven years, I have introduced anecdotes in my classroom as we do to express an idea or to illustrate a concept. And I use an example from, say, someone I talked to at church yesterday or a particular service that I went to, and I use those as examples. I'm thinking now you're going to ask me to give you an example, and so I think... Do you have one? I think I'll try. Okay. Um, about, let's see, this is 2020, so in, 24, no, in 2016, I made a decision after the death of my husband to walk on the Camino de Santiago, <laughs> and I walked 500 miles uh, with a backpack alone. I planned the trip on my own, but with many, many people. And that journey in which I had a change of clothes and a toothbrush and very little else taught me that how little I needed to actually engage with other people and to be relational and to talk about faith. And all along that journey, I would talk with people about their faith, some of whom were just doing it for sport. But now in the classroom, when they talk about their having difficulty figuring out their path or their career or what journey they're going to make. And I say to them, you know, I had that trouble on the Camino. I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep going. I felt ill that day, so I had to spend an extra night in a certain city. But the next day, I got up, I asked God to take care of me, and I kept walking. And so I'll use that kind of a story in the classroom and say to them, I'm not saying to them, you must believe in God or Christ, though I would like that, but I am saying to them, take care of yourself, eat well, think about it overnight, tomorrow's another day, we'll see where your journey is taking you, trust the journey. Very nice. Um, it sounds like you've adopted uh, your faith in living in education at the academy. Do you have any other thoughts about that? About my faith, faith and in, the academy? in the academy? I would say that the best thing that's happened in, say, the last 10 years is that because I have been vulnerable, I have taken a risk. You know, I thought it was separation of church and state, but once I decided no more of that, mm -hmm that I would express my faith. And by being vulnerable, by being humble and acknowledging the walk of the students that I'm working with, I've had this opportunity to become more relational with the students and with other faculty members. Mm -hmm. And I have felt, I go to sleep at night saying, this was a good day. You know, I had one moment in which I connected with another human being, far more important and far more fulfilling for me, and I hope uh, powerful for them, that we had a moment that they might remember, and that certainly I will remember. Or that changed their vision of themselves or the visions of the world. Yes, yeah. yes. That opens them up to a little less of a narrow path mm -hmm. and make them see the world, the bigger, wider world, which I think having faith can help with. Right. So um, can you give us a, one more piece of advice? Do you have anything left? I've heard so many <laughs> great ideas for taking my faith and spirituality into my own academic experience. I think if we remember that sometimes we are in exile, and in this time of COVID, we feel so exiled. I'm currently studying First Peter, and right off the bat, he talks about Christians in exile. And if we can remember that we are in exile, but that does not mean that we should not hold strong to our faith and speak with others about our faith, to take the risk and to be vulnerable with other people, that we will find like-minded individuals and we will find other people who are searching and who will want to ask us about our faith. Where do we go to church? How do we practice? How can we help them? 
And that gives us the opportunity. It's that kind of vulnerability that in the beginning years of the academy, I thought I was not to have, and that now I'm working to have more of. So I encourage people to walk in that vulnerability. Claudia, you are amazing. I've always loved getting a chance to talk to you, but today's been especially wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so Thank much you. for having me. It's been delightful, and it's been great to see you and talk with you in this way. Thank you.